Intense susception is a cause of acute pain. It's prolapse of one segment of the bowel, the intussusceptin, into another, and it causes acute pain in early childhood, okay? Early childhood. Under three years, 90% are ileocolic. The remainder may be ileo, ileocolic, colocolic, or ileo-oleo. But this is what you're commonly going to see. 90% are idiopathic and have no leap uh, point, and they're just due to hypertrophy of uh, prior patches, small nodes. So typically three months to three years. 10% older children, they have abdominal pain, may have vomiting and bloody stool, and this is an intussusception. Ilium going into colon, and the total length is usually 8.5 centimeters. And on ultrasound, you're going, and typically you see it because it's ilium going into the colon and the right abdomen. You're going to see multiple layers, the target sign, the bullseye sign. And if you lay it out, you've got the pseudo kidney sign. Okay, so ovoid, sort of like a kidney, at least that's what they call it. Here's another one, the target sign, the right abdomen, and you lay it out, you've got the pseudo kidney sign. That is intussusception. Turn color on. If the bowel is viable, you're going to see lots of color. And it's sort of helpful if you're going to go ahead and try to reduce this because it tells you that you have viable bowel, and this is usually reducible. Here's another one. There's no flow. Um, we made an attempt, a reduction, it didn't work, and that was ischemic bowel at surgery. Lead points, 10% of patients, more common in older children. The lead points include mechal diverticulum, polyp, hamartoma, duplication, cyst, and lymphoma. And in ultrasound, you're just going to see a mass in the intussusception. Here is the intussusception, a multi-layered mass, right abdomen, right upper quadrant, not right lower quadrant. This echogenic part is the mesentery that goes along with the bowel. This is a mass. That was a hamartoma. This is an intussusception target sign, multiple layers. The echogenic part is the mesentery omentum, and this was a polyp. Here's another intussusception, multiple layers. There's an anechoic mass in this intussusception. That's a duplication cyst. The ultrasound factors that predict that you're going to have difficulty reducing this if you see absent blood flow, I showed you that. If you have a large amount of fluid in the central intussusception, it's a bad sign. If you see a lot of trapped lymph nodes in the intussusception, and if there's a lead mass. Sensitivity 94 to 100%, specificity up to 100%. Occasionally, fecal contents, inflammatory bowel disease, hematoma will mimic intussusception. This patient had acute pain, and we thought maybe that was intussusception. Did an enema. This turned out to be a colitis. And the differential is the other intussusception, transient intussusception. It occurs in the left upper quadrant of life synthogenum. It's very short. Uh, compared to the standard intussusception, which is much larger, it resolves spontaneously, and it's a leave-alone lesion. Don't touch it. It's going to go away. So these patients uh, had pain. We do look at the right lower quadrant, but we also look, as I mentioned, in the entire abdomen. If we don't find something in the right lower quadrant, this was in the left upper quadrant. It's a target appearance. It's an intussusception, it's small. Another one, it's small. Those are transient intussusceptions. We feel comfortable with that. We leave it alone.